What kind of language learner are you? Different types of language learners need different types of advice, different types of materials and methods and approaches, and different types of planning if they're likely to want to learn more than one language. Language learning is a, a transferable uh, skill and uh, it's something that you get better at. And so if I think if there's any possibility that you might end up learning, wanting to learn multiple languages, it's a good idea to sort of know that in advance and plan for ways of, of doing that more effectively. So uh, in giving some thought, there are many ways you could identify different types of learners, but in terms of identifying them for that purpose of, of saying, are you going to want to plan to be learning multiple languages or, or not? Um, I sort of uh, gave this some thought and came up with a number of categories of different types of learners. I'd like to run through them with you and see if uh, you can identify yourself in any of them or resonate with them, or if you can think of any other uh, types of, of learners. So the first type of language learner, I think, is the most, most common, and I'm talking about beginning language learners who are, I guess I'll call them normal people, average, typical people who are learning a language because they need to. Somebody's required it of them. It's necessary in school. Uh, for some reason, it's, it's a practical necessity. Um, and so you need to do it. And so you want to do it right. You haven't done it before, or maybe you had some experience learning language in school, but you didn't really learn very much. So um, you don't have much experience. It's just something you need to do. And uh, maybe you're looking for advice uh, because you want to do it right. So I think that's probably the, the most common category of, of language learner out there. Um, sometimes these people make um, good progress and then they can turn into this second type of learner, uh, which is what I'm going to call the improving learner. This is the type of person who's out there that somehow life gave them a foundation in, in a foreign language already. And uh, because they have that in this particular language, maybe they're not required to learn it at this point, but they realize that they have it and if they don't use it, they'll lose it, and they'd like to improve it. So uh, simply because they have this language, uh, life has given it to them, uh, they want to continue to work with it and improve it, but they don't have aspirations to say, oh, then I'll learn another language. It's just the language that they happen to, to have. Uh, and then a third kind of person uh, that I'm going to identify as the sort of being in, in this first broad category of learners uh, is what I'll call a, I don't know, a utilitarian, practical, pragmatic user of languages as tools. There are plenty of people out there, scholars, diplomats, businessmen, uh, people who are able to, with the same uh, criteria, well, I, I need to use this language. Well, then they, they learn it and use it, and they don't make a big fuss about it, and it's not a, a big issue, and they certainly don't become enamored of the the idea of learning lots of languages, uh, they may end up knowing uh, I mean, using a handful of languages, but uh, it's uh, it's very uh, in the sense of using languages as tools. Without love of languages as such, it's going to propel them to say, oh, I'd like to continue learning more languages. We're getting into that territory with a, a second broad category, the next three types of language learners that I can think of. Uh, the, the next type is I'm going to call more of an aspiring learner than an actual learner. This is a type of person that um, is just feels an affinity to languages, likes the idea of knowing lots of languages, maybe plans on doing it, uh, uh, hasn't really maybe gotten started yet. You, you're, you're thinking about it, you're enamored of the idea, you're planning to do it, you're getting ready to do it, waiting for circumstances or something to be right, but uh, you're uh, somebody who hasn't acted on it yet, but you may, and you, you, you may end up learning quite a bit. Um, Maybe you act on that. Maybe you got started. Maybe you get a foundation or base in one. You get a taste of language learning. And it's not just an idea that's interesting anymore. Uh, it is, uh, yeah, you've, you've got a taste of it. And so the next kind of learner, the fifth type of learner I can think of in this would be what I'm going to call mm, maybe an admiring and an emulating learner. Because the same way you found this video here on YouTube, maybe you'll come here uh, after getting a, a taste of language learning and come here and, and, and I'm just a boring old professor talking about things, but there's a lot of young dynamic polyglots out there that are making interesting films about them traveling around the world using their languages. And so maybe you find somebody like that and you say, wow, I, I, you know, I'd like to be like that. So that's uh, something to aspire to. 
Um, and so maybe that will uh, ins inspire some people to start to uh, work at uh, languages somewhat. And before you take it very seriously, there's a time some people go through a stage, a sixth type of learner might be what you're going to call a hobbyist, uh, somebody who's uh, uh, maybe takes language learning sort of like playing a video game and does some with uh, just the idea of some sort of learning something fun, but not really trying to master it or you know, just sort of engaging with it in sort of a, as a pastime type way and, and finding that kind of interesting. Well, if you find that kind of thing interesting and you, you keep it up long enough, you, you might actually learn a language. And so I'm going to cross into the next level of, 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 of types of language learners. And these are the ones that I think need the, the most planning because these are people that are likely to end up possibly uh, wanting to, to learn lots of languages. Uh, the next type, the seventh type that I can think of, of, of a language learner is what I'm going to call the thirsty language learner. Thirsty language learner is somebody who um, has learned a language or two and, and, and likes it and now feels confident about it and has an idea, oh, well, there's, there's another language or two. You know, they've still got uh, maybe not so much of a, of, 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 a, of an idea that, oh, maybe I'll want to learn even more than that. But, um, there's sort of, uh, I'm starting to get to that handful quantity and starting to think, hmm, this is, this is an interesting and rewarding activity in itself. And then that kind of person could possibly turn into the eighth type of language learner, which I'm going to call the, um, reasonable restraining uh, type of, of, of language learner who's really got a taste now for learning lots of languages, who's got a couple of languages under his or her belt, um, and uh, would really like to learn a lot more, and just is enamored of the idea of learning more, but is also cognizant of life's limitations, uh, limited numbers of hours in a day, and years of life, and other obligations, and and knows now how much time it takes to really learn a language. So it can be a bit realistic and say, well, I'd, I'd like to have a, a hit list of languages, but, you know, I am going to try to think in, a, in, in terms of, of a five or 10 year plan. And what can I do in terms of that time frame? So uh, this kind of person is going to set up some, some limits and, and, and try to work within them. And then the last type of language learner, the, uh, person can't keep to those limits. I'm going to call this the insatiable language learner. And that's uh, what propels the polyglot community out there, the polyglot conferences and things like that. The kind of people that um, you get such a taste for language learning that you just really continuously want to learn more and other languages and see how languages are related to each other and how uh, knowing some can help you learn others. And all of this opens up culture and literature and other things to you. And so you just become insatiable and you uh, want to kind of learn as, as many languages as possible. And you know that there's limitations in terms of time, but uh, somehow you're continuously concocting schemes to try to um, add more time so that you can learn more languages. So um, those are my uh, nine types of language learners that I can think of. So totally normal beginning learners, um, people who've got a language under their belt uh, and want to improve it, uh, people who've maybe got several languages and can use them as tools but don't need to get fascinated by language learning as such. Then we've got people who just by nature are interested in language learning. We've got the, uh, the aspiring language learner who hasn't started yet and the, the, the admiring language learner who's started and then sees others who've learned more and uses them to get inspiration. And then we've got the, the hobbyist the person who uh, is starting to get more and more of a taste for it. And then we cross another line and we come to the seventh and eighth and ninth types of, of learners, the, the thirsty learner who's really starting to get a taste uh, for it and has a few under his or her belt and wants a few more. The uh, restraining person who knows that there are limits on what one can do and the insatiable person who's fighting against those limits. So are you one of these or is there another type that you can think of? Thanks for listening. And uh, I'll try to talk to you again next week.